Hello, hello, hello. Happy first day of Passover. That is so exciting. Okay. As usual, it's going to be quick. I just thank God that um, I was able to come on. Yeah. So, let's pray real quick. Father, I love you, Dad. <laughs> I bless you, I thank you, I honor you, I glorify your holy name, I magnify your holy name, and I thank you for being our Father, our King, our Lord, and our Savior. I thank you for this new day that you have given us, and indeed, we are rejoicing and being glad in it. I just ask you, Holy Spirit, to take over this video. Lord God, I ask that you would get the glory out of it and allow who's supposed to hear it to hear it, and it'll be for your glory. Amen. Short and sweet, y'all. Short and sweet. Okay, if you don't know me, my name is Natasha. Natasha Severe. The name of the video is Watch Your Gates. The name of my ministry is Secure Future. I have a Facebook page. I have a Instagram. I have TikTok. I have Twitter. The girl is on social media. Trying to manage it all is a beast, so I do what I can. So, I do my videos on YouTube. This is my YouTube channel. And I upload it to Facebook. Or I do uploads on my computer. And then I just upload it everywhere. Is wherever I can figure out how to do it. I'm still trying to figure out how to upload on Instagram. I'll figure it out one day. But blessings to everyone. Thank you for joining. Those who join. Those who jump on. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, all the things that you guys have been doing. Um, this is a ministry that the Lord gave me, a channel that he gave me. He's the one who put me on, on YouTube. <laughs> Anybody told me how many years ago that I would be on YouTube, I would say, me, heck no. Actually, <laughs> actually back in... 2017 or early part of 2018 I went to Moravian Falls with um two of my friends and we went there for like a little ladies retreat you know um communing with the Lord it was beautiful it was an amazing time that area itself is so beautiful mountains and what have you and um, we went to church. And when we were at the church, it was the church is called The Gathering. It's in Moravian Falls, North Carolina. And <laughs> after church, the house prophets prophesied over the new people. So it was me and my friend Molly and... They decided that um, we were gonna do. They were gonna do us together because it was late and what have you. Okay, fine. So, <laughs> you know, the guy came and he, you know, talked to us and what have you. But then he looked over at me and he was like, you know, whatever, whatever. He gave me a nice prophecy, a lot to look forward to. A lot actually did come to pass, but. <laughs> When I was leaving, he said, well, okay, well, it was really great talking to you. You know, God bless you and see you on YouTube. And I bust out laughing. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. What? Why would he say that? Right. And then I looked to my friend and I was like, that was weird, right? That was weird. really weird that he said that. <laughs> it's like a couple of weeks after that, maybe a couple of months after that, the Lord said YouTube. And I'm like, YouTube? Why YouTube? Well, I'm telling you, 200, almost 250 50 videos later, here I am on YouTube. So, we give God the glory. We give God all the glory because he knows the end from the beginning. And things that I say I would never do, <laughs> he said, oh no, that's exactly what you're going to do. So, I never say never. And I stay very open to the things that he asked me to do or tell me to do. Like I never thought I'd be an author. He had me to write a book. Never thought I would have wrote a book ever. You know, uh, I love to journal. 
So that was my own personal thing, but he wanted me to actually write a book. It was hard at first, but I did it. So I guess this is pretty much to say you never know. Once you're open and you leave yourself open to things to let the Lord work in your life, you'll be surprised the things that you can accomplish, the things that are already inside of you that he wants to bring out. You know, that's the best part ever, that he has so much in us. You know, I never thought I'd be retiring at the age of 50. Never, <laughs> never, never thought I'd be traveling as much as I do for the Lord. When he say, let's go, I'm psh, suitcase in here and I'm ready, you know, he say, write a book. I wrote a book. I mean, some of it went was done with some kicking and screaming, but um, it was done. <laughs> he always gets his way, by the way. Always gets his way. And, um, yeah, and the YouTube channel. And there's so much more. There's so much more, you know, but he's so good and he's so faithful. And even though I fuss a little because I'm like, I can't write no book. He's like, yeah, yes, you can. I'll help you. They went to YouTube channel. I'm like, I can't talk on YouTube channel. And he's like, just say what I say. You know, I mean, he's so loving and so kind and so amazing about how he brings us outside of us to show us who we really are in him. So we bless his name. We bless his name. I had no intentions of saying all of that, but I'm sure somebody needed to hear that because we shortchange ourselves. We let society tell us who we are as opposed to letting the Lord show us who we are. And once we throw our hands up, you know, we talk about being saved, but being saved is also being surrendered and being submitted to him, to his will. You know, when he say, let's do this, it's like, okay, let's do it. When he told me to quit my job, he didn't even say retire. I was waiting for that retirement package. <laughs> he was like, okay, let's go. You know, it took me a minute to really fully understand that that's what he said. But, I mean, life has just been so amazing since then. You know, things that I would have never thought, never expected, you know, but that's what it is when you, you're saved and submitted as opposed to being saved and kind of on the fence doing you as opposed to being submitted, totally and completely submitted and allowing him to have his way. His way is always going to be to your benefit. You know what I mean? So... I hope that helps somebody just go all in with the Lord. You know, go all in, all in. Don't hold nothing back. Don't be lukewarm. Lukewarm people get spit out. Don't be a halfway Christian where you're thinking about it, you know, where you in church on Sunday and you're in the club Friday and Saturday. I used to be like that. That used to be me. I used to be in the club Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night drinking, carrying on, dancing, having a good old time. And Sunday morning, decked out with my kids, half drunk, and in church. Okay? That ain't cutting it no more. The Lord said we got to be all in. We have to be all in, you know. And it's a, it's a walk that is so beautiful you know it has its moments for sure but just knowing that the lord loves us so much and he got us i mean literally has our back you know and things that we would never imagine is what he has for us you know the word said eyes have not seen ears have not heard he has been blowing my mind ever since and i love it so i would encourage you to Throw your hands up and say, okay, Lord, have your way. <laughs> Get ready, though. <laughs> Get ready, because he will definitely just say, let's go, you know. But the best part is he grabs your hand and he say, let's go. He doesn't send you and say, good luck. He's like, let's go for real, you know. So, okay, so I didn't mean to talk about that, but that was a good segue into what I did want to talk about. So we were talking about different things to um, help change the mindset to line up with abortion not being an option. 
Okay, so, and this is things that you talk to with your kids, things that you talk to with young ladies or young men that you interact with, you know, that might be thinking about doing stuff that is not necessarily Christ-like, you know. So these things that we're talking about are things that you can share with anyone and everyone to help them have a better walk, you know, with the Lord. Okay, so I have to stop for a second. Okay, so yeah, we were talking about different things that you can um, talk to people about to help them come to terms to um, better understand their walk. And with better understanding certain things, you know, they won't make the decision to abort. They'll um, have a better understanding of life and themselves. So we talked about your body we talked about the mind we talked about the environment yesterday so today we're going to talk about the gates so when i talk about watching your gates we have four gates we have our eye gate our tongue gate our mouth um our feet gate eye ears eye ears feet and the mouth so those are the things that we have to watch. Our tongue gate, ear gate, eye gate, and our feet gate. Our tongue gate is what we say. What do we talk about? What do we talk about? Are we cursing people? Are we being negative? Are we being nasty? Are we talking about things that are uplifting and loving and kind to each other? How are we being intentional about what comes out of our mouth? That is so important. You know, the Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. That means the things that we say can either hurt someone or help someone. It can encourage them or it can break them down. You know, so when we're, you know, in terms of like relationships and stuff like that, if you're with someone and they're already showing you signs of abuse or negativity or, you know, um bullying that's another big that bullying is out of control you hear me but if you see someone bullying you or controlling you um that's a red flag and that's something that you should look at you know and these are things that people really should be looking at before they even get in relationships with people you know how are they interacting with me how are they dealing with me how are they talking to me are they making me feel uplifted do they make me feel valued do they make me feel loved do they make me feel safe you know those are the things that the lord does for you he makes you feel valued he loves you you know you know you can run to him and be safe you know and if people are not saying stuff that adds value to your life and make you feel like the the, the godly person that you are you know then you might want to reevaluate that. So that's your tongue gate, your ear gate. What are you listening to? Are you listening to people say nasty stuff? Are you listening to people cursing and, and, and carrying on? Are you listening to that music that serves you no purpose? You know, a lot of people don't realize how um, rap music adds anxiety and stress and what have you. For young people, what it does is it gives them a false illusion. You know, they're talking about bees and hoes and doing this and doing that and y'all are singing the stuff and carrying on not realizing this stuff is going into your system. You know, so when you meet a young lady or you meet a guy, you're talking the way the music people are talking with the bees and the hoes, and that's not a good idea. <laughs> that's not a good idea, you know? So what we take in in our ears is very important. What are we listening to? Are you listening to scriptures? Are you listening to worship music? Are you listening to Christian music? You know, are you listening to sermons about how Jesus lived and the different disciples and, you know, learning about Things that will help you grow in your own life. You know, those things are beneficial to you. The next one is the eye gate. What are you looking at? 
What do you see? What do you see in front of you? You know, sometimes some people don't have very good examples in front of them. So that's hard because that's what they they perceive and that's what they keep in their heart. But um, what do you see? What are you watching on TV? What magazines are you looking at? Which friends are you looking at? You know, those things are so important. You know, are you reading the Bible? Are you reading books that are uplifting and, and, and helpful? You know, I just finished a book about um <laughs> breaking demonic curses. That was so interesting to me to even read about how this guy grew up with his father being a fetish priest, a voodoo priest, you know, to know that people have overcome those lives. You know, those are things that we should read because it does edify us. It encourages us. It teaches us. And it helps build us up to be better Christians. You know, but if we're reading pornography, that's only going to add lust to you and add confusion to you and make you think that that's reality when it's not. It's just something else that's being added into your system which is not, you know, beneficial for you at all. And the last gate is your feet gate. Where are you going? Where are you going? You know, the Bible says um, there's um, a part in Proverbs when it talks about the feet that's running to cause dissension. You know, are you running to cause trouble? Are you running to go listen to gossip? Are you running to go to the party? Are you going, you know what I mean? Where are you going? Are you going somewhere positive? Are you going to church? Are you going to the gym? Are you going to help somebody? Are you going to volunteer? You know, are you going to school? Where are you going? Where are your feet running to? You know, so those are things that you have to really, you know, consider when you are trying to live a positive life and and it's in living that positive life and it's in being intentional that you start to say to yourself okay well i'm not going to live this way and i'm not going to live that way and i want more for myself so when you know dude comes and starts kind of like baby 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 in you because he wants to have sex before marriage, you're going to say, oh, no, 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 mm -mm. no, that's not me. That's not what I want for myself. I want better. I want more. I know more. You know what I mean? So once you familiarize yourself with what the Bible says and what the Lord says and his word, because his word is the direction that, you know, he wants for us to take because that will make us get to where he wants us to be, you know, so Proverbs 4, 23 to 27. It's kind of long and I have two versions, but it's really good to be able to see what the Lord is saying. You know, I say it all the time. I don't ever want it to be what I say. I want it to be what the Lord says because it's in you hearing what the Lord says. That's going to help you. Not, you know, I'm just the mouthpiece. So <laughs> Proverbs 4, 23 and 27 in the New King James Version says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established do not turn to the right or to the left and remove your foot from evil i like that i love when it says ponder the path of your feet you know watch where you're going mm. okay so the same scripture in the passion translation says so ab above all guard the affections of your heart for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being. For, for, for from there flows the wellspring of life. Avoid dishonest speech and pretentious words. Be free from using perverse words no matter what. Set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose. Looking straight ahead, ignore life's 
distractions. Watch where you're going. Stick to the path of truth and the road will be safe and smooth before you. Don't allow yourself to be sidetracked for even a moment or take a detour that leads to darkness. That is so profound because if you stay on a path of truth, which is the path leading to Jesus, if you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, if you keep your ears listening out for Jesus, and you keep your heart for Jesus, and you keep your feet running towards Jesus, that will ensure that you do not detour on the path of darkness. Now, if you decide to look to the left or to look to the right, you liable to see something that's going to cause you a distraction and then you're going to be like distracted, which is what you don't want to do. So the Lord is calling for you to be focused on the things of him and don't get distracted with the things of the world. Remember Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed with the things of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and oh my this is interesting i'm sorry that's you see i just got distracted looking to the left and to the right looking down instead of looking up and that's only because i was looking for something to say to you oh lord i got distracted <laughs> oh yeah romans 12. <laughs> yeah I'm telling you, everybody can have a YouTube channel. Okay, hold on. Two seconds. Do not be conformed by the things of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, so then... Okay, okay, here we go. So that's what the, the Lord is saying. Don't, don't be worrying about what's going on with everybody else. Don't be trying to conform yourself to the things of the world. Let the Lord transform you. Let him take your mind out of the things of the world and let you <laughs> realize that you have the mind of Christ and allow that mind that's within you. Okay, okay. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay? So when you now focus on what the Lord says, you focus on what the Lord is doing, you know, and you stay in letting him transform in you, letting him renew your mind. You know, we come up with a lot of stuff going on. You know, some people had it worse than others. Some people didn't have anything really bad happen to them. But I think each person has a level of transforming that the Lord does for us so that we can come into what he wants as opposed to what we, you know, were subjected to growing up and things that, you know, were imposed on us, so to speak. <sighs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. I like that word. So, um, yeah, <laughs> why you got me sidetracked, Lord? Okay, right. Okay, okay, let me finish. So, so right, he doesn't want us to, to stay with, you know, the things that, we, that was imposed on us um, when we were growing up. He wants us to grow up in the things of him. So he takes it upon himself to transform us to the renewing of our minds so that we can know his will and his purposes and walk that out. Okay, so, um, yeah. Um, that was it. That's all I had to talk about. And if you are pregnant and at the crossroads and you don't know what to do, let me be the one to tell you what to do. Keep your baby. Your baby is a gift from God. Your baby has a destiny. Your baby is going to make you so proud and accomplish everything that the Lord already set them out to accomplish so keep your baby there are plenty of resources out there there are plenty of people out there that will help you i will include my um, email address and that will um get in touch with me you know and we'll talk through it and uh, you know we can 
walk you through the process of um, finding a pregnancy center, adoption center, whatever it is that you need. But whatever you do, keep your baby, okay? Um, if you have not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today of all days is the best day to do it. Today is the first day of Passover where we celebrate the... Um, death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So today would be a great day to make Jesus your Lord and Savior so you can have the beautiful life that he has for you. Not the, not the life of the world, but a life that he has for you that is full of excitement, full of um, adventure. <laughs> That's what I want to say. It's an adventure. It's it's never a dull day, I promise you. But just to know that you have Jesus on your side and he's walking through life with you, walking you through life, let me say it right, is um, an amazing blessing. So we'll say this very short prayer and all you got to do is say it out loud. He knows your heart. And as soon as you say that prayer, he's going to give you the biggest hug ever and you can just get ready for an amazing life. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, I know you came into this earth to die for my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Amen. That's it. Once you say that, he will fill you with his Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit is the one that's going to teach you and guide you and comfort you and help you and just walk you through life which is beautiful and that's better because you know now that you'll have everlasting life as opposed to not knowing if you were to die right now where you would go but now you know for sure you know so that's a blessing so again if you said that prayer and you would like to talk about it i'll have my email address shoot me an email and we can talk about next steps but until then you can go to church a bible-based church that believes in speaking in tongues with the Holy Spirit and um, get a Bible, read it every day, pray, talk to the Lord every day. And yeah, that's it. And prayer is very simple. Just whatever's on your heart, that's what you say to the Lord. That's all he wants to hear anyway. He's not a fancy. He doesn't need the fancy, fancy terminology. He doesn't need the big words, you know. He needs your honesty and your willingness to be to communicate with him. He loves it, y'all. He loves it. So that was it. That was it. We'll say a prayer. I definitely went over. I think my Moravian story, my Moravian fall story in the beginning kind of threw us off, but it's okay. Um, I was about to say it's Friday night, but <laughs> it's Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. I'm so off with these days. Okay, so let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your beautiful sacrifice of dying on the cross for us, that you thought about us, you cared about us, you didn't forget about us, and you didn't leave us in our mess, that you came in to save us, and then you died, and you were resurrected, and now you are our king, and you are our Lord. And for that, we are so grateful and so thankful. We bless you, Father. We honor you. And I pray that all of my brothers and sisters, Father God, would get a new, fresh revelation of you and who you are, and be, especially that you are their Father. I pray, Father, that you will help them to walk into the path that you have for them, watching their gates therefore the four gates that you have and that you would just continue to give them more revelation on the stuff that we talked about today we bless you we honor you we thank you we pray psalms 91 over this video and again i pray that whoever's supposed to hear what we all hear it i thank you holy spirit for speaking i thank you lord god that you would get the glory out of this video in jesus name amen that's it. I'm going to upload the video and uh, hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night. Bye.